Chrome, Safari, Firefox, and maybe, just maybe, even Microsoft Edge are what we call browsers, and they are one of the most used applications on everyone's computer. However, underlying technology has been relatively unchanged for the past 20 years. But now, thanks to WebAssembly, it might finally be changing. Before we get into WebAssembly, I think we need to understand at least a little bit of how browsers currently work. So the first layer is the UI. This is what pretty much everybody sees when they open any sort of website. This is the part that's actually like visible to the end user, kind of like the end product. Right below it, we have what we call a browser engine. So this is anything that handles like the back button, all the sort of actions that you would perform within the actual browser, that's handled all by the browser engine. Then we get to the main part, which is the rendering engine. This is the part that actually takes in the information to describe to our browser and to the UI what we want to build. So it takes in all your HTML files, your CSS files, it takes in the network information, takes in all your JavaScript code through a JavaScript interpreter, bundles that all up, and sends it up to the browser to actually display to the user. So let's say you're trying to display the Google website, you would take the HTML and CSS for Google, all the network connections you need to make Google work, as well as all the JavaScript logic that needs to be handled by Google. Then that rendering engine passes it up to the browser engine, which passes it up to the UI. And like magic, you get this little Google website over here. Now, the focus of this video is right here with this JavaScript interpreter. But before we get to that, let's talk a little bit about JavaScript and what kind of language it is. JavaScript is an interpreted language. This means it doesn't need to be compiled to ones and zeros before it's sent out to be used. The browser is the one that actually interprets that language. So it takes the JavaScript in, figures out what it's gonna be, turns into binary or some machine code, something that the actual computer can understand, and thus is able to act upon it. And if you haven't caught on where I'm going with this, the JavaScript interpreter is the actual part that does this interpreting within the browser. So all this sounds great, but why, why are we talking about this? Well, this whole process comes with two problems that we're gonna be discussing today. The first big problem, all this stuff is not standard between the browsers. That means each browser that we talked about in the intro has its own different Java interpreter and slight variations of how they interpret JavaScript. Edge uses Chakra, Firefox uses SpiderMonkey, and Chrome uses V8. This is what they call their little JavaScript engines. And although they all do relatively similar things, there are little edge cases where things are interpreted a little bit differently and can cause problems within each of the browsers. And the second big problem is that the browser has to do one extra step every time before displaying your web page. Instead of just having that machine code or that binary code that a computer can read directly, it needs to go through this JavaScript interpreter process in order to make it interpretable for the computer. Now this is where WebAssembly comes into the picture. And WebAssembly, even though web is in the name, isn't specifically only for web. This is just like a, like a binary standard for how to interpret little bits of code within your machine. So technically it could be used for whatever application you want, but of course it was built to solve this problem for the web. But what does the word assembly normally mean? The word assembly is usually meant to denote a lower level language. This means language that gets turned directly into machine code and usually is a lot harder to code with than higher level languages like JavaScript. But benefit of assembly code is that you're representing directly what's happening within your machine through code. It is basically a text representation of the binary code. And that's why WebAssembly is called WebAssembly because that's pretty much what it is here. Now there's two file types that you might hear whenever working with WebAssembly. The WASM file would be the actual binary code and the WAT files would be the text representation of that binary file. So theoretically, as a programmer, you could write WAT files and you'll be coding directly in WebAssembly. But most people probably wouldn't be writing in those type of files. That's very cumbersome and takes a long time. But the beauty of WebAssembly is that it's a binary. So there are compilers written that take any language and allow you to port that over to the web. And that's just one reason why WebAssembly is awesome. You can write web pages in any language that you desire. And not just that, but you can take apps that you've already built for the desktop and you can port them over to be used wherever people have a web connection. But along with that, it also solves the two problems we brought up earlier. So the first thing, WebAssembly is an open standard that's maintained by the W3C, which is the World Wide Web Consortium. This is basically the global agreement group of how the web should work. And all the major browsers like Chrome, Safari, Firefox are all part of maintaining this WebAssembly standard. And the second thing is WebAssembly is fast. One of the reasons is that it compiles directly to binary, so it tries to make the code as efficient as possible. And a second part of that is there's no JavaScript interpreter. So there's a whole step that's missing from the equation of taking your web page and displaying it to the user. Because of these reasons, WebAssembly is the future. But there's a couple buts in there. The first thing is it's still the early stage of WebAssembly. 
It only came out in 2017 for the first time. And JavaScript has been around for like 20 years. So it's not going away anytime soon. There's still some issues that need to be resolved and you know optimized for WebAssembly. Next thing is SEO. So current web pages are built with HTML and CSS. If you're building WebAssembly, it's all just binary code. The way SEO works, it crawls through your whole web page, gets all the HTML elements, puts it in a little database so that when people search for what they're searching for, they're able to find your website. Well, with WebAssembly, everything's binary. You can't really do that. Now, I didn't research this too much. Maybe they already have a solution coming up, but it's something I need to research a little bit more. But just because WebAssembly is the feature doesn't mean JavaScript's going anywhere. It's been around for 20 years. It's getting better and better every year. I don't think it's going away anytime soon. And even if WebAssembly is dominant, there's so many businesses and so much stuff built upon JavaScript that it's gonna take a long time before anything changes with that. The general recommendation I've seen around the internet from all the articles I've read is that JavaScript, HTML, and CSS should be the default thing used for your web pages. And you should choose WebAssembly if you need something that needs to be super high performance and you need your code to be as efficient as it can get. If you're interested about the, how the internet works in general, make sure to click this video on the screen right now. And if learning new things like this interests you, make sure to like and subscribe because I got a lot more videos like this coming.